thank you, Bobby, for again giving me this opportunity to share my uh, views and uh, what you just uh, narrated uh, on this living legend is so inspiring. And just as the topic uh, of discussion uh, for engaging today is the two eyes, injustice and inequity. Uh, today, I will take a slightly different approach uh, by kind of giving a theme to my narrative as being the two eye versus the three eyes of Malbayo. So I'll give you the three eyes, the two eyes from what you've said as part of the discussion, the global discussion is all about uh, injustices and inequity in the uh, TB diagnostic landscape that has been there from times immemorial. You have only said over the last century, but I would assume that it has been there all along and it still exists today. And you say so very consciously that it is no longer acceptable. So what as a TB community have we done? And I will just give you today, for today's engagement, the three eyes from Mobile's perspective. As a company which is into molecular diagnostics and TB being one of our very, very high priority and high focused areas, the three eyes that I spoke about is innovate, impact, and inspire. So just as uh, this lady's story, Virginia's story inspires all of us, and at this age, I think she is nearing uh, an, a century, right? And she's still working, she does an all, own chores, et cetera. We get inspired by people who have been through all of it, seen through all of it, seen through the inequities, seen through the injustices, and we say, hey, we've come a long way. How far do we go, are we going to stick with all of these? rubbish. So the three eyes of Malbio versus the three, the two eyes of this, uh, uh, this program stands out in very stark contrast. And I can say that at the end of it, not only numerically, because three is always going to be stronger than two mathematically, but when we put a plan in action and when we say that we are going to innovate the way the world needs it, Malbio is going to keep innovating the way the world needs it, making it simple, simpler, and simplest so that, so that we know where the last mile gaps are. We know where the last mile disconnects are. We know where the last mile uh, needs are so that through our innovation, we provide access and therefore, take the inequity out of the whole equation. So one is injustices can always be taken care by proactive people, proactive communities, proactive uh, organizations. And I believe ours to be one such organization. And uh, inequities can always be taken care once you identify the gaps, which we believe to a certain extent that we have, I'm not saying that we've identified all the gaps. Therefore, the two eye of injustice and inequities versus our own three eyes of innovation, impact and inspire. While being entirely contra to each other is also complementary because you're all actually helping to erase the inequities that existed, to erase the injustices that existed and still exists. How do we do that? So for, for the last two, three years and for the last one year being more specific, we've always been talking of taking services to the people. And we know we've done programs on these people have spoken on this. So literally when you take services to the people, you are actually empowering them. And we talk about empowering our communities. We are talking about making our communities demand rather than beg and you know make a meek request. We are telling our communities, look, this is your body. This is your body and therefore you are at full liberty to ask for remedial measures should your body be affected by TB or for that matter, any other pathogen. So when you are playing the role of an enabler by bringing technology closer to them, you're actually 
empowering them. You are making them feel much better. You make early diagnosis possible and correct diagnosis possible so that the stories that we hear at the various TV forums of the TV survivors, and one thing common in all the stories were, what if, what if I were to be diagnosed as early as it is possible today? All that has become of me, and I'm talking of those survivors, and those are so heartbreaking stories. All that has become of me today is because I just did not get diagnosed correctly and early enough. So when you hear these kind of stories and you hear of the inequities and the injustices over decades and centuries, and as you rightly said, no more, enough is enough. But on the other hand, folks like us, folks in the industry, folks in the scientific community, folks within the universities have to develop technologies, have to bring out tools that erase those such hard to take words like inequities and injustices. So the Molbio three eyes of innovation, and as you are aware, the TB world is today experiencing the impact of the Molbio innovation, not only allows for early detection and therefore creating a very, very significant difference in the lifestyle or in the overall uh, life progression of a TB patient who has been infected, but also by ensuring that these tools are being made accessible to the very last mile where there is absolutely or was absolutely no access because of whatever. And today you have access. So I think the combination of our tool, our intent, our innovation, our ideas, and then all culminating in the form of a product that is easy to use, no compromise on the science per se, and readily deployable in the farthest corners of the country will go a long way to alleviate the pains, the pains that we feel from the inequities and the injustices that have occurred over decades and centuries, as we say, in this landscape of TB. Of course, our narrative is today on TB, but the same thing can happen with any other disease, right? We've just been through one pandemic. The words that are around the scientific community is that over the next couple of decades, there will be many more pandemics. And, in, in, and the, the worrisome uh, scenario is that the frequency of these pandemics will become much more frequent, much more shorter. The frequencies will become much more shorter. So when you have invested in this type of innovation or other innovations that are coming into the market, you're providing proactively a diagnostic infra for any country, whether it's in the high impact country or you know countries in the low mid, the emerging countries, as they say, of which India is also one. You're making them proactively ready. The pandemic also taught us that when a pandemic happens, whether in a low income country or a high income country, the, the, the barriers of injustices and the inequities vanish. The pathogens do not discriminate between whether you are from the global north, or the global south, rich or the not so rich in the developed countries or in the emerging countries. So you could be hit equally bad. So there is, a lot of learning from all this that we've gone through over the years, especially the recent pandemic that we had, that enough is enough. Let us say that this kind of inequities must be dealt with, must be taken out of the equation, and this type of injustices must be taken out of the equation as well. And I'm happy to tell you, Bobby, especially in the, I'll not, I will not name TB per se, but in the infectious disease world of which we are a part, you know, our bread and butter is infectious, infectious disease diagnostics. There is today an awakening, there is today a realization in the global audience that, you know, we need alternatives. We need credible alternatives to even the WHO, believe me, people are saying, you know what? evaluations, stuff get, uh, you know, stuck because of the 
rigors of the processes that the WHO or the evaluation bodies they follow. And therefore, we would like to have something simpler, something that we can do in our own countries. And based on a successful outcome, we can ask our uh, government in terms of a policy decision that go ahead, we have done it on our own, it is good enough. And I don't look at these kind of alternative mechanisms as being uh, in competition to each other. I don't see this as in being competition to the WHO or you know, uh, world organizations that have been with us for, the, for so many years, decades, centuries. I actually see even this, this occurring, this newfound, uh, you know, enlightening uh, areas of work as being collaborative. And I was in a recent discussion with uh, one of the one such alternative body, and I said, you know what, you could actually do this, whatever you're saying that you want to do, and provide data to WHO that helps WHO kind of fast track on decisions that would otherwise take WHO a lot of time. So the idea is that we seek ways collaborative ways, good collaborations, meaningful collaborations, and not just scratching the surface. That will not work. It has to come from deep within your heart. So good collaborations, heartfelt collaborations, to kind of help each other out, all with the purpose that our communities cannot suffer any longer. Our communities, the TB community specifically for disengagement, cannot and should not and will not wait for a diagnostic, a correct diagnostic test to be done at the first point of contact for the patient, which is the community health center, because there are tools available today that allows you to do that. So all in all, for this time, for sure, and you know, as I am learning through all my experiences across the globe, I think the one word that I wish to add is collaboration. And if we collaborate with, well with like-minded individuals, I see no reason why the injustices or all the inequities that we had can slowly but surely be eliminated and the world will be a much healthier place. And we all know that a healthy body, a healthy mind, and a healthier world is a happy world.